Dana. Dana White. Dana White, president of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. From a Boston hotel bellhop to the CEO of an Ultimate Fighting Championship, White has fought his way to the top of the fight game. Dana White's story is a testament to the power of vision, determination, and the unwavering belief in one's dreams. Despite his meteoric rise in the fight world, Dana White's journey has been fraught with adversity, including facing bankruptcy and being pursued by the mob early in his career. And yet, his resilience and determination have enabled him to overcome these challenges and emerge stronger than ever. Dana White's story starts in Manchester, Connecticut, where he was born on July 28, 1969. I came from a family with a single mom. My dad was an alcoholic and was never around, and when he did show up, you didn't want him around, you know what I mean? He, he was usually drunk. From a young age, Dana was fascinated by combat sports, especially boxing and martial arts. This passion didn't just stay with him as a hobby, it shaped his future. As Dana grew older, he dipped his toes into the business side of combat sports. He took care of gyms and organized amateur boxing matches. And what we did was we started this Get Kids Off the Street program. Basically, it was called the Muni, which was the municipal courthouse in Southie. And we put a, a ring in there, there were bags and everything else. We used to bring kids in from all the different areas to come in and box. And we wanted these kids to, to sort of get to meet each other and, and, and respect each other through boxing. But Dana's journey wasn't smooth. He faced his first big challenge in the 1990s when he had a run-in with a notorious figure from the underworld in Boston. This situation got so dangerous that Dana had to leave Boston and move to Las Vegas. And these guys literally walk right into the middle of the class. I'm like, I'm teaching a class here. We need to talk to you. I'm thinking, these guys own the club or something? So I, I leave the class, I go out and start talking to them, and they start asking me if, they, if I know who they are, and I don't. So that was it, man. They wanted some money. What do you do? I ignored them. I didn't do anything. And then one day, I was sitting in my apartment, and I got a phone call, and they basically told me, we want the money. And I said, I don't have the money. It was $2,500, which was like 25000 to me. And they said, you got till tomorrow, which was a Sunday. So I literally, that day, I, I bought a plane ticket and came back to Vegas. Leaving behind his entire life because of threats. But it led him to a new beginning. In 2001, Dana, alongside his childhood friend Lorenzo Fertitta and Lorenzo's brother Frank, decided to buy the Ultimate Fighting Championship for $2 million. The UFC was struggling, and not many people knew about it at the time. Dana and the Fertitta brothers saw potential where others saw failure. However, turning the UFC around was not going to be easy. By 2005, the UFC was on the brink of bankruptcy. Dana and the Fertitas had invested millions into the company, trying to clean up its image and gain a mainstream audience. They introduced stricter rules and tried to get the sport sanctioned in more states. But the money was running out, and it seemed like their efforts might not pay off. This period was one of the lowest points for Dana, full of sleepless nights and tough decisions, controversies, and criticisms. Along with financial challenges, Dana had faced his fair share of controversies. His outspoken personality and confrontational style have led to public disputes with fighters and criticism from fans. For example, in the mid-2000s, there were disputes over fighter pay, with some athletes voicing that they were not getting their fair share of growing sports revenue. Dana has also been known for his use of harsh language and getting into heated exchanges on social media, which has sometimes drawn negative attention to him and the UFC. Another significant controversy came with the handling of UFC events during the COVID-19 pandemic. Dana was adamant about continuing events despite safety concerns, leading to debates about the balance between entertainment and health precautions. There's no fans, can't travel the fights around. I think everybody is pissed off, confused, um, you know, been locked up in their houses for three and a half months, people are wearing masks, people are, you know, they're, they're, there's protests, there's riots, the list goes on and on. Listen, if you don't think that what I'm doing right now is probably the hardest thing that I've ever done, and the amount of people that I have gunning at me right now is insane, but here we are. This is our, what, fifth fight? We pulled off our fifth fight. No other sports are going right now but us. Dana's belief in the UFC never wavered. He fought through the financial instability, 
controversies, and criticisms with a clear vision for what the UFC could become. His risk-taking attitude paid off when, in 2005, the reality TV show The Ultimate Fighter aired, bringing much-needed attention and new fans to the sport. This was a turning point for the UFC, helping it to start making a profit for the first time under Dana's leadership. Dana's handling of controversies has also shown his commitment to the UFC. He's worked to resolve disputes with fighters, and his decision to push through with events during the pandemic demonstrated his dedication to keeping the sport alive for fans around the world. Today, Dana White is seen as the face of the UFC.